Now, to do any of the points that we've talked about so far, we have to gain support, right? This might be support from a manager or colleagues or potential users of the thing that we want to do differently. And actually, for this, I'm going to reflect back on some of my path at Google and use that to then generalize some ways that we can use broadly to generate support in those around us. This is Prasad Seti. Prasad led the people analytics team when I joined Google. And I worked there for a number of years. And at times, I reported to Prasad directly. At other times, I reported to managers who reported to Prasad. But he was always the one, ultimately, whose support I needed. But I never asked for that support. I earned it. And I earned it over time by doing a number of things. First and foremost was concentrating on doing great work, right? I was hired to do a job, so that is the first thing that has to happen, is I want to consistently exceed expectations in the role that I've been hired to do. It's only after that that we can really start to think about moving beyond our core job. And once I had developed the ability to do that, then feedback became very important. Anytime I wanted to try something new, right? Maybe it was a new methodology for how we were modeling something or a different way to show data than we had done before. I would get input from my colleagues around me, right? I wouldn't go straight to Prasad or one of my internal clients. I would try things out in smaller ways first, it, learn from that process, iterate, and also I was building support in my colleagues around me through doing this. Actually, as I mentioned, in context of feedback and learning, the more I asked for feedback, I found the more people started coming to me for feedback. Because it turned out that this space, data visualization, that I was interested in wasn't something that many people had given a ton of thought to before. Um, the breadth of skills in the team in which I worked were diverse, right? We had technical experts, PhD in stat statistics and uh, organizational psychology, but not a lot of people had spent a lot of time thinking about how we communicate data, how we build our graphs and our slides. So as I started to invest in these skills in myself, others started to come to me soliciting feedback. And actually through that and extending beyond that, I formed connections with other people who were interested in this space, both in my immediate team, but also reaching further out into other analytical teams across the organization. Right? I'd have coffee or lunch with someone and we would share our work and learn from each other. Actually, it was through these feedback and connections that I became known for doing good work in this space. And that when the opportunity came up to start building coursework and teaching classes more broadly at Google, people came to me for that. And back to Prasad, it was because of all of the things that I had done along the way, right? focusing first and foremost on doing great work, soliciting feedback and iterating so I knew what was going to work before I put it in front of Prasad or his peers, and then forming these connections that by the time I really needed Prasad's support, it was already there because that foundation had been built over years of work. And really the thing I needed his support for most was time, right? Time to invest further in these skills and figure out how to teach others. And eventually that support even got me the flexibility to be able and supported in doing that in ways that stretched beyond my team and beyond Google. So stepping back and thinking what we can generalize out of that, as well as other learnings over time. I think when it comes to gaining support, the first thing you have to focus on is getting your job done and getting your job done well. I encounter this too much with um, client work where someone will get really frustrated because they want to do this thing when if they really were to reflect, they're to they want to do this thing, but they're not maybe meeting all of the things that they need to be doing in their core job first. And maybe I'm a traditionalist when it comes to this, but we are being hired to do a specific 
job. And so knocking that out of the park is a requirement to earn any sort of flexibility to move beyond that day-to-day -day work. Once you've done that, you wanna get feedback. And we talked about feedback in context of learning. Uh, feedback, though, is also critical in the context of generating support from those around you. And this means getting feedback not only from those who are already supportive, but especially from those who might have resistance to what you want to do or how you want to do it. There are such rich learnings that can come from those conversations and in understanding what might be driving someone's resistance so that you can figure out how to flip that around and turn it into support. When it comes to building connections, it's another way to make connections with people who will support you. Um, I did this informally at Google, right? I'd have coffee or meet with lunch, meet for lunch with someone. We have a client who we've worked with for a number of years who's taken a more formal approach here. They've created a center of excellence at their organization internally for data visualization and invited people from analytical teams all across the organization. This allows them a central way to provide resources, uh, training, helping people connect and develop their skills. Another thing that I didn't really touch on in my story, but that certainly was part of the learning at Google and from my time there, was to embrace resistance. And this might sound sort of counterintuitive, but when we are thoughtful about how we react to resistance and setbacks, that's actually when we can learn the most, the fastest. Um, but we have to be thoughtful, right? And not just let a challenge come up and point us in the other direction, but work to understand where the resistance might be coming from or how that misstep occurred that we might do differently next time. How do we take that and turn it around into support? You can use some of these other uh, things that we've covered uh, to be able to do that. And one thing I'll just point out that you should notice, not on this list, is any crazy investment in tools or resources, trainings and such. Neither of those things are requisites to being able to do and support good work in this space. Because good work in this space, what people really need, typically first and foremost, is time and the ability to practice. Right? Sure, there's some foundational knowledge that's helpful, but for that, you can get scrappy. If there's a book that you recommend, uh, I have a couple I might recommend, uh, buy a copy for your team's library. Or if you're a manager, buy a copy for everyone on your team. Have them do a book club. Right? Build that foundational knowledge, but then what you need as an individual is to get the support so you have time and flexibility to practice. And if you are a manager of a team, consider how you can give or help your team make time to be able to practice these things and help be a buffer so that they get some patience with internal clients or otherwise to be able to apply learnings and understand that there'll be some missteps along the way, but that's going to help improve everyone's work over time.